Welcome to The Debrief. I'm here with The Hill's Editor-in-Chief, Bob Cusack. Nice to see you, Bob. Hey, Robbie. All right, let's jump right in. The Republican National Committee has announced that their 2024 National Convention will take place in Milwaukee. In a statement, RNC Chair Ronna McDaniel said, Republicans stand united in Milwaukee in 2024 to share our message of freedom and opportunity. We're still more than a year away from this big event, but it's already drawing some attention. So what went into the decision to make it Milwaukee? Well, listen, I think Republicans have always targeted this state, and it's a big state. Um, in 2012, Romney and Ryan, uh, Ryan from Wisconsin, mm -hmm. uh, didn't come close to winning it. Then Trump narrowly won it. Then Biden won Wisconsin in 2020 narrowly. So I, I think it's smart to go into the state. You know, remember, Hillary Clinton wasn't exactly going to Wisconsin a lot <laughs> down the stretch of, no, of her. No. So or Michigan you know, <laughs> or Pennsylvania. Yeah, and they, they may make some jokes about that, uh, you know, yeah. even if it's eight years later. But I think it's very important for Republicans to win back, you know, so, the so-called blue wave. And of course, we don't know who's going to be running. Uh, you know, Biden says he's going to run. And Trump is running. DeSantis, you know, it's going to be a crowded field. But, but if you win Wisconsin, you know, you got a good shot to win. So I think it's a good move by uh, the Republicans. Democrats have not yet decided. They're still debating on right. a number of states, including Georgia, which they've done well. Uh, but we'll see that decision later on. Republicans winning Wisconsin would be it would be a sign that they're on the path to win, right? Exactly. Wisconsin doesn't not, no do guarantee. it for you, but if you no do, if you have Wisconsin, maybe you have Michigan, maybe you have yeah. Pennsylvania. And listen, you know, Ron Johnson, despite all the critics. Won again. Yes, you know, he, he did. beat Russ Feingold twice. Then he said he wouldn't, gonna, he wasn't going to run. And so then he took heat for saying, "Wait a minute, oh, you, you're only going to run for two terms." Ran for a third term, defied the odds, and won. So there, there is, you know, this is this is a very, very purple state. Yeah, and one in an environment that turned out being less favorable to Republicans than many of us expected. Yeah. Yeah. And the thing that Republicans really need to work on is that early voting. And that's a, that's a Trump effect where he says, you know, he's saying don't early vote. And and the RNC chair McDaniel said, wait a minute, we got to reconsider this. Uh, we actually had people show up, but uh, we didn't have enough Republicans voting Republican. So I, I think it's going to be very interesting to see the dynamic. And remember, you know, the RNC race is still ongoing. Uh, McDaniel seems to be the, the favorite. Um, but, you know, will she favor Trump? Uh, you know, I doubt it, but some Republicans are concerned about that relationship. Yeah, she's taking a lot of flack right now from uh, the right wing. I'm seeing tons of criticism of uh, of her from conservative media figures, uh, sort of say that, you know, she's been in charge for years. Yeah. And uh, there has been a lot of losses uh, well, suffered no, by Republicans when they expected to do better. It's the culture of the Republican Party, yeah. and it's def different with Democrats. Nancy Pelosi lost 63 seats in the House more than a decade ago. She stayed on, okay? Newt Gingrich in 1998 uh, lost five seats they were expected to, to win. It ended up, he ended up leaving. He was weakened. So I think it's a valid criticism. If you don't win, and that's why McDaniel's been on the defensive, saying, oh, no, 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 we got people to the polls. They would, some, too many yep. Republicans were doing, you know, splitting the ticket. So, you know, but listen, if you don't win, you're going to get blamed. That's what we're seeing in so many of the Republican leadership battles right now. We're seeing the, the leaders are saying that people like McConnell, McCarthy, McDaniel, a lot of M's in there. Yeah, yes. All saying that we have a good strategy. People want to vote for Republicans. They just don't like Trump. And you keep, you being the Trumpier base, keep foisting Trumpy yes. candidates on us. And we're, we don't want that. And if you let us do our thing, we would win. And they would point to places like the governor's races in various states where you had a, a non-Trump Republican governor. Sure. But then you have the and you have the base saying, no, we blame you for not being excited enough about the candidates we actually like. <laughs> yeah. Now, and, and this fight will will continue. Yeah. And the people like McCarthy and McConnell and McDaniel, I think, uh, are going to want Trump to just focus on your race. Uh, don't yeah. focus on other races, because what happened in the last cycle, Mitch McConnell is not going to let happen again. They're going to get better. Had they gotten better candidates in New Hampshire and Georgia, I think Republicans would control the Senate. I'm not so sure about Arizona. I think Mark Kelly was a very strong candidate, but they also had a weak candidate there. So they've got to do better than that. And they can't just accept people that Trump says he should yeah. be the one. Yeah. And on the House side, I know uh, Matt Gates, for instance, has been speaking out constantly recently against McCarthy. Yeah. Um, there's some breakup in the people keep put, always put 
Lauren Boebert and Marjorie Taylor Greene together, right. although it's, it sounds like that's a mistake yeah. to make that assumption yeah, and that there's a lot of long. tension in between them. <laughs> yeah, and it's going to be interesting to see with the McCarthy speaker race, you know, who breaks off uh, and who doesn't. You know, I've been talking to people, and, and I think it's, it's a good bet that McCarthy's going to win, um, but he's not there yet, and there's going to be high drama. And for the first time in 100 years, we could see a second ballot. We shall see. Uh, there'll be a lot of negotiation, but but McCarthy is going to have a he's going to have a you know busy holiday schedule calling people. And there's really no <laughs> plausible alternative. And one of the only no. plausible alternatives, Jim Jordan, has endorsed McCarthy, right? <laughs> exactly. As has Taylor Green. Yeah. You know, and you know some people are talking up Steve Scalise and others as alternatives. And maybe if you get to multiple ballots, um, but there isn't an alternative. And I think that the pressure will eventually probably get to these conservatives, but they are not one to bend. It's going to take a lot of pressure for them to bend. Yeah, and then you can see how the conversation will be in certain corners of conservative media about how, if it's McCarthy again and McConnell yep. again and McDonough again, look how they didn't listen to us. Is it? It's no and surprise it's that we team. continue to lose. Yeah, no, and that, that's, that's the civil war that's going on in the Republican Party. And, and not like the Democrats are totally united, but they're more united right now. They absolutely are, yeah. After, uh, you know, a good election. Right. They, they have more reason to be because absolutely. they've got the, the whole family together and feeling pretty good about things yeah, Until right the now. next fight. Yeah. Until the next fight. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you so much, Bob. Thanks, Bob. That's all for us this week. Thanks for joining, and we'll see you next time on The Debrief.